Well, folks, in today's video, I'm going to be showing you guys how to rewind and rebuild small three-pole DC motors. Now, uh, the electric motor, I would say, is arguably one of the most important parts of any model train. It's what powers the whole unit. It's uh, the heart that keeps it running. And uh, over time, what can happen is these can short out and they will stop turning over. So I'm going to show you guys how you can rebuild these motors by rewinding the coils so that they run again and you can keep your engines running. Just to be completely full disclosure, I am no expert on rewinding motors and there's probably going to be somebody in the comments who's way more knowledgeable. Um, the thing is, is that there is not a lot of information I find on the internet on how to rewind a motor. Uh, so I just thought I would share with you guys my little bit of knowledge which I've learned so that hopefully more people can learn and over time uh, there will be more information on the internet on exactly how to do this properly. This is just my crude way of showing you how you can get these motors turning again. Now the way a three-pole motor works is basically uh, you've got a commutator on top. This is what captures the power from the two brushes which are pushed up against this piece, uh, against these metal shields, and as this uh, spins uh, what happens is it keeps kind of alternating the power from one side to the other. What that causes is the coils, which there are three of, making it a three-pole motor, uh, to be energized, which will uh, make a current against the motor and it will cause the armature to spin. So that's how these things work. Now what can happen over time is when these motors are under too much strain and their magnets weaken over time, uh, the coils can get very hot and a very thin layer of insulation on the wire can burn off uh, causing coils to short and then it's really just a countdown until the motor itself just goes pop and that's the end of it and uh, usually there's a nice little smoke show and then it's done. So anyway, we're going to rebuild the actual coils and uh, make this little end scale motor work again and hopefully get one of my old Bachman engines running again. So first we're going to disassemble the motor. Some motors come apart completely differently. In this case there are four tabs which actually hold uh, this piece on and you just want to kind of pry up on each of those with a screwdriver. You can see we just bend them all uh, back to reveal this piece of plastic. Once you've got those out you can usually, if there's something like this, you can usually just pull it off and then we pull out this piece and uh, we can actually unscrew these two pieces. These are what hold the brushings in. Uh, in fact, we'll take those out before we pull this piece out because if we just go yanking this out, there's a chance we'll lose the brushes or the springs, which is not something you want to do, so we'll do that carefully. And really, all you have to do on this particular type of motor is just unscrew this kind of top piece here. be very careful when you take this out. There's your brush and behind it it's spring-loaded. Uh, many motors are different. You'll have some of them have uh, little plates that cover over the brush springs. Whatever the case, the motors work the same way. They're just laid out differently. There's the other one. Now that we've got that out we can just pull this whole plastic piece off. And there is our armature. One thing I should note is removing the armature uh, does apparently weaken it because uh, you take it away from the magnetic field. I haven't personally noticed much of a difference, but uh, people that are more expert than me claim this, so they're probably right. But, uh, well, motors don't really work anyway. In this case, I've actually already rewound this motor once, but I didn't rewind it uh, exactly how I wanted it. I just it's kind of doing a little experiment and today we're going to uh, go through it a bit differently. So to begin we're going to remove the bad coil, coils. And you just want to snip these little wires that go to uh, the commutator. Once you snip it you can just start, of start unwinding the actual coils. Now, if you wanted to do this properly, you would do it with the same gauge of wire, and you'd want to count how many times you wind this around. So it'd be like one, two, three, every time you pass like around one side. And then that tells you how many times uh, each coil's been wound, so you can wind it the same amount of times. In this case, we're using a different gauge of wire, so uh, it doesn't really matter. We can just uh, tear off each of the coils because we're going to be building it from the ground up. 
And once you have your armature completely unwound, it's time to choose your magnet wire. In this case, I'm just using some uh, generic magnet wire I got off Amazon, uh, suggested by people in the uh, slot car hobby uh, who do a lot of rewinding because uh, obviously they're working with slot cars, which their motors are they burn out easier because uh, they're operating at higher RPMs, stuff like that. Uh, anyway, this is the kind I got. I just bought it off of Amazon. I think it was uh, something like 20 bucks for three kilometers of it, uh, which is like three miles for you Americans. Uh, and this will work fine for this job. It's not optimal. You'd optimally want to be using a thinner wire, but it will work fine. Anyway, we're going to get around to actually rewinding the motor, and this is something you have to be quite careful with. Now, uh, before we start rewinding the motor, one thing that I have to point out, which is very crucial, is when you wind each of the coils, you need to make sure you wind them all the same way, otherwise your efforts are going to be for nothing. So, uh, for example, what you'd want to do is if you wound this around this way, when you got around to this side, you would wind it the exact same way, because if you wind one of the coils backwards, it's actually going to push against whichever way this coil works and the armature will not turn over and all of your efforts will be for nothing. Now that we've got that out of the way, we can get to rewinding this. Now to begin rewinding your armature, what you want to do is take your magnet wire and uh, what I usually do is just run it through one of these slots and you want it to be touching one of the tabs right up here and uh, you can have a bit of slack that you'll cut off later and you just gently hold it there and you begin to very carefully wind. And one thing that is very important, even if uh, you're just rewinding this from scratch without having to count how many times you unwound it, you need to count how many times you wind it because you need to wind it the same amount of times for each pull. So count. Every time you go around the top is usually how I do it. So I'll check in once we have to start a second coil, because this part's just boring. Alright, so we got one of the poles now wound. In this case, I put 100 turns on it, whereas before I only put 60. So uh, the more turns you put, the more torque you get, the less speed you get. So uh, depending on what you're doing, uh, for a slot car, you'd probably want to put a few less turns just so you can get uh, a little bit more speed. But for a model train, we want to have more torque uh, than speed, so this is a good idea, I believe. And I'll just work the wire down. Now, uh, this is a very crucial part because what you want to do, you can see there's our wire. And the second tab, you wind it around in the same direction. You begin winding the other one, and then you wind it the same amount of times that you wound your first pole. So, since I wound that pole a uh, hundred times, we're going to wind this one a hundred times, and then the next one. And another hundred or so turns later, and we just do the same thing again. Wind it right around that tab there. Down, under, and then we go around a hundred times. Super exciting, you know. Now a hundred turns later, what you do, you run this wire up here beside the other wire. You can see we're back to square one. You clip them both. And what I usually do just to organize them, wind them together so that they're one wire. And then we very carefully wind that around that uh, tab, the first tab where we started. And then we clip off, actually we'll solder it first and then we'll clip off the excess. And it should be good. Now it's time to solder each of those little tabs so that we connect the coils to the commutator. And what we want to do is just get a bit of flux on there. Don't need too much. And what you do is you take your soldering iron. And I know you're supposed to put the uh, solder, you're supposed to hold the solder directly onto whatever you're soldering, but in this case we're working with something so small and I don't have uh, a very fine bit of solder. We're just going to solder it on like that. And there you go, and you can see the wire is now fused there. So you just need to do that with all of them, and then you're pretty much finished, at least with your coils. 
Now we've got the two last wires off. We can just very carefully snip off the excess and then we're ready to put our armature back in our motor. Now, if uh, the motor is in bad enough shape to require rewinding, it's also likely that the commutator is dirty, and the commutator is very crucial in getting power to each of the coils, so you want to clean this up uh, before you go reassembling anything. Also give the brushes a good cleaning, because there could be dirt and oil there as well, but clean uh, contacts are good contacts. We'll just take a Q-tip and some alcohol, we'll just very slowly clean this commutator off until it's shining. And if you work at it for a while, you can usually get it to a state like this. This isn't perfect, but it's a lot better than what it was, and it will do. Now to begin reassembly, we're first going to put some oil in the bearing on the back. You don't want to put much, just a thin slick, and then you take this and you put that in there like so. And then you take your other side, and you put some oil in here. And these are the only two spots in the motor you need to oil. Don't put any oil on the commutator. Some people suggest doing that because it will reduce friction. Um, and it does temporarily, but uh, the commutator is a spot that gets very hot. So it's going to dry out the oil and it will start burning oil. Uh, and I've seen it trash many commutators. So my advice is just keep it clean. Don't oil it. Once you get it in there, you also want to make sure that it turns no matter which way. If you push it, because there is, in this case, a little bit of uh, wheel room, you want to make sure it doesn't seize. Because when you rewind these coils, if you don't rewind them perfectly even like, uh, you know, I do in my case, there's always a chance they can rub up against the magnets or something like that. I don't know. You just want to check to make sure this is moving as it should. The magnets are very weak in this case. You would optimally not want this to spin as free as it does, but... Not much I can do about that at the moment. There's another spot where you might want to look out for potential trouble. You can see the spring on the right is sticking out quite a bit. And you can see the spring is doing its job and allowing this to adjust so that it puts adequate pressure on the commutator. The one on the left, however, you can see it's got a little bit of uh, pressure left in it, but it's not enough. So we're going to need to figure out what's going on with that so that it uh, applies adequate pressure to the commutator and provides good electrical connectivity. Now in this case it seems to be because the spring is actually caught in there. Now one thing about removing springs is that there's usually a little hole on the top and if you poke a piece of wire in there you can usually snag the spring out and uh, fix it. And right there is our spring and it's actually not looking too bad but you can see on this side there's just a few of the coils that are just a bit stuck together so we're going to try to stretch it back out very gently and hopefully it will do its job. And now as you can see they're both at about equal height and you can see it's coming back out just fine just like the other one. So they're both good now so they're ready to put back inside the motor. I personally find the best way to put springs into motors is usually upside down because if you do that you have uh, a lesser chance of losing the brush, which is, you know, sitting on top of the spring there. Gravity is on your side is what I'm trying to say. So we'll just wind that in there. And flip it. And we'll do the same on the other side. And now is the moment of truth, the most scary part of rebuilding just about everything, which is testing it. I'll put this on the up close camera so you guys can see whether whether or not this has been done correctly. All right, folks, here's the moment of truth. For a second there. So as you can see, it's running pretty smoothly, and this is on pretty minimal power. So if we Turn this up. You can see it can do a pretty high RPM. We add a bit of resistance on there. You can see it's still uh, turning over fine. So we'll go and stick this uh, motor in a locomotive and uh, see if it will turn over. Well, folks, I've got the motor inside the locomotive. Uh, this locomotive happens to be my uncle's. It hasn't ran since sometime in the late 2000s. Uh, when I was probably about, I don't know, eight. Uh, anyway, we're going to try giving this thing some power and see if it uh, comes to life here. Ah, look at that. He's a runner.
well, sort of. The track is quite dirty. I'm still sorting that out. But again, this thing has not run since the 2000s, uh, ever since the motor went on it. So uh, this rewind has got the engine running again. It's definitely far from perfect. Those weak magnets, I think, are giving it some issues. But nonetheless, it is a runner. So that will be it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed. And uh, hopefully I'll have some more content on the way soon. Thanks for watching, everyone.